Howdy again, and this is Tubal Cain with Shop Tips 172 and 2 thirds. Now, if you haven't seen the other two in this series, which is uh, 172 and 172 and a third, make sure you look at those, and those are also about the Whitworth uh, quick return mechanism. And this is a continuation on it, but now I'm actually out at the real machine and I'm going to measure it uh, on the machine rather than on the mock-up uh, teaching aid which was in the previous two videos. So be sure and go back and watch those if you haven't seen them or this will not make any sense at all to you. This part of the road shaper is called the ram and uh, on the tool post here I have another kind of ram and that's the Dodge Ram and be sure and watch uh, the end of this video because in that I will discuss the disposition of my Ram truck which you might have seen in a few other videos. I intend to use my Radio Shack stopwatch for this but I have set up this shaper so it's running so slow that I actually could uh, time the strokes with one of these old uh, hourglasses like from the Wizard of Oz. In eighth grade I went out for track because I thought I'm fairly fast even though I was small. Well the uh, coach uh, timed everybody I think on the 100 yard dash and uh, when I got done he said Peterson you're so slow I could have timed you with an hourglass. Kind of hurt my feelings and I never forgot it. But coaches could be cruel. Please no comments from the safety Nazis but actually if you remember I have banned safety Nazis from watching any of my videos, but I did have to remove the homemade guard from this uh, uh, belt system here in order to do what I'm going to do. And uh, what I have done here is I've disabled the regular drive motor, so that's just going to be idling. There's no power to it at all. And I mounted at great effort this uh, right angle uh, gear drive here, and that's going to run this thing really slow, actually too slow but uh, you'll see what I'm going to do here in a second. So this is just a temporary mount here, some heavy tubing and I've used about uh, uh, six C-clamps here so it's all just temporary. Luckily I own 150 C-clamps so it was no hardship at all. But take a look at how slowly this thing runs when I turn it on now. That's the drive system, and of course, there's the ram moving ever so slowly. With my temporary uh, drive system there, the shaper is running at about four strokes per minute. And looking in the uh, works here, you can see the big bull gear and the the spur gear, the drive, which is the drive gear, and uh, the uh, Scotch yoke, and then of course it all comprises the Whitworth quick return mechanism discussed in the earlier videos, but this might give you a, a little idea of what's happening, but uh, not, not so much, and that's why I went to all the effort of building that uh, teaching aid in the previous videos. Make sure you keep that cover closed in normal use. I've got the shaper set for a rather long stroke, about six and a half inches. In fact, seven inches is the maximum. And the reason I did that is that uh, then I can get relatively large uh, numbers uh, to measure both the return and uh, the cutting stroke so I can compare the two. And remember, that's what I'm looking for here is a ratio with uh, whole seconds rather now than uh, messing around with hundreds of a seconds like I did on the other uh, teaching aids. Here I go measuring the cutting stroke or the forward stroke and that's eight seconds And here I am measuring the return stroke. Six seconds. And I'm not counting the hundredths. So I have six and eight. 
so to wrap it up here the forward or cutting stroke was uh, 8 seconds the reverse or return stroke was 6 seconds and that gives us a 6 to 8 ratio or simplifying it a 3 to 4 ratio so you can easily see here that the uh, reverse or return stroke was faster than the cutting stroke and that is what the Whitworth quick return uh, mechanism is all about. Just a quick note on the uh, direction of rotation here that normally the big bull gear is going to uh, turn clockwise and that will give you a faster speed in return uh, than it does for cutting. But uh, one man was quick to uh, comment on that saying that all of the larger shapers he was familiar with had forward and reverse switches so there were times when they ran it in reverse so you had a uh, faster uh, forward motion because they were doing slotting operations or, uh, or keyway operations where they were actually cutting on the backward stroke so in that case the uh, forward stroke was the faster stroke and the return stroke was the cutting stroke so that is why you might see some of these machines with a with a reversing switch rather than just a, a on and off switch such as this one has time for a little comic relief and some of you are saying uh, yeah very little uh, relief but uh, this uh, Dodge Ram when mounted on uh, the shaper ram, I guess you could call it the ram ram. But keep your head out of the way when you set up a shaper. If you got your head down close to the work and you're examining something, you turn the shaper on and with a faster stroke it's going to come and uh, butt the heck out of you. So uh, beware of that. That'd be one of the most uh, dangerous things uh, concerning the metal shaper. So Mr. Bobblehead here thinks that he can uh, hit the ram ram, but he's not going to do it. Ouch! That concludes this video in the three-part series of the Whitworth Quick Return Mechanism, and as usual, Tubal Cain beats the subject to death, but I hope it wasn't too much for you. But stay tuned now, even though the video is actually done, there will be about another two minutes here as I dispose of my well-used Dodge Ram and uh, this is all that is left of it because it has been reduced to rubble and has been shipped to China as scrap so watch that and thank you for watching this continue to watch my videos and there are about 400 or 450 of them so long for now but stay tuned from time to time you have to let things go in your life and I'm going to do just that with this Dodge Ram truck and uh, it has appeared in several of my uh, videos uh, actually it's been the Ram Cam and that is uh, named by uh, one of the viewers after the Ram on the front end but this thing is uh, an 88 and it is 26 years old matter of fact in Illinois I could apply for uh, antique plates However, with antique plates, you can only go to and from events or for repairs, so I'm not about to do that. But uh, this is going to the boneyard. But actually, instead of uh, to a salvage yard, this is going to a scrap dealer. I hope to take another video when I get there to uh, uh, show you uh, me handing over the title. I would love to see this crushed, but I don't think they'll probably crush every day or would let me watch the crusher, but I would give anything to see this thing reduced to a pile about 12 inches thick. I just called the scrapyard and they're paying $195 a ton. I think this will go weigh in at uh, around 4,200 pounds or so. And so I'm hoping to net around 400 bucks. The trouble is it's got about uh, 40 or 50 bucks worth of gasoline in it, you know, and it's not easy to siphon out of these things. But why am I junking this? It has about 92,000 miles on it, actual miles, even though it's 26 years old. But I, uh, it's, it's always been terrible on gasoline. It gets 11 miles per gallon on the road. But uh, recently the brakes went out, or at least the rear brakes are out, and I got enough front brakes 
to take me to the scrapyard without having this thing towed because and I, I've checked the front brakes to see if they lock up in gravel and they do so that's where about 75 percent of the braking is anyway so I'm going to drive it in. As a souvenir of my uh, eight or ten years with this truck I'm going to uh, emasculate it by taking the uh, hood ornament off the ram and I'll keep that as a souvenir. Perhaps I'll use this as a ram cam and that is a neat piece of sculpture even though it's kind of schmaltzy I suppose but you know they don't use hood ornaments anymore. Too much wind resistance and too dangerous if you hit somebody I suppose although this thing would butt you. One last look at the Dodge Ram from the side out in daylight. You can see how bad it's gotten. There's no paint on the top of the cab at all. And from this side you know it's pretty pathetic and I am ashamed of it and I'll be glad to have it off the property. The tires are still pretty good and the upholstery in, a, in the cab is perfect and the seats are most comfortable. And I'll be darned if this thing doesn't ride beautifully. I'm at the scrapyard, I'm on the scale. He's going to check the VIN number, make sure this isn't stolen, and uh, reduce it to a uh, pile of rubble. Send it to China. And that's it for the truck. 390 dollars.